Hi folks, it's good to be with you today and love to everybody out there. <coughs> Just making uh, some short videos this morning. And uh, <coughs> my website's jasonburnspreacher.com and my Facebook uh, and Twitter as well. You can get really good material, apologetic material on my Twitter. And on my Facebook you'll see testimonies and preaching. Uh, from various preachers that will be a blessing so I'm going to recommend some books for you today you could get hold of these books and they'll be a blessing to you so my website is jasonburnspreacher.com and also I have a website called Royal Blood Ministries website and Twitter as well but I'm not active as much on those at the moment so first book to recommend is this uh, God Centred Evangelism uh, it one writer has written, here writes John Murray, we have the theology of evangelism, and evangelism without scriptural theology has lost its moorings. R.B. Kuyper's writing as his preaching and lecturing was always characterised by clarity and simplicity. The book begins with God as the author of evangelism and shows the relation of his love, election, covenant and commission to it. There are chapters on the scope, urgency, motive, aim, agent and triumph of evangelism. Dr. Kuiper also deals with zeal for cooperation in and resistance to evangelism. A student of B.B. Warfield, on whom he made a deep impression, Dr. Kuiper had a distinguished career in the pastoral and teaching ministry. He was president of Calvin College, 1930. In 1933, and Professor of Practical Theology at Westminster Theological Seminary in 1933-52. And the picture there is of George Whitfield. It's published uh, by the Banner Truth. I read this some years ago, and I'm going to start rereading it again. But if you're an evangelist or a pastor or a, even just a Christian where you want to do evangelism, but you... Uh, want to read something before you do it or pray about it this is a good book to read uh, especially if you're an evangelist it will strengthen you as a pastor it will strengthen you and it's a lovely little book to read uh, it's only 219 pages and I'll just read I'll just read um, I'll just read uh, page 13. It says, Evangelism has its roots in eternity. Theologians speak of the Pactum Salutis, made from everlasting by the three persons of the Godhead. The term Pactus Salutis may be translated either covenant of redemption or counsel of redemption. The writer prefers the later rendering because the term covenant is used generally in theology to designate 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 an agreement made by God with man and historically administered. Be that as it may, the truth of the matter is that the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit before the world was unitedly planned the salvation of sinners. In that plan, God the Father was to send his Son into the world to redeem it. God the Son was voluntary to come into the world in order to merit salvation by his obedience unto death. God and the Holy Spirit was to apply salvation to sinners by the instilling of renewing grace within them. Scripture clearly teaches the reality of this counsel of redemption, especially in the writing of John, the Father. He is repeatedly said to have sent the Son. For but one example, here is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and he sent his Son to be a propitiation for our sin. 1 John 4.10 Christ spoke of his commission given to him by the Father. For instance, towards the close of his earthly ministry, he reported, as it were, to the Father, I have glorified thee on earth. I have finished the work thou gave me to do. John 17, 4. In such a passage, among others, as Isaiah 53, 12, prominent, uh, prominent mention is made of the reward given by the Father to the Son for his redemption work. Therefore will I divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he has poured out his soul unto death, and he was, he was numbered with the transgressors, and he bore the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. 
Just as clearly does Scripture teach that the Holy Spirit was sent by the Father and the Son, Jesus promised the disciples the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost to whom he said, The Father will send in my name, John 14, 26. And he described the third person of the Trinity as the Comforter, whom I will send you from the Father, John 15, 26. In short, before the world was, the triune God formed a plan of salvation to be executed in its several uh, reciprocally distributed parts by the Holy Spirit, uh, by the Father as sender, the principle by the Son as sent, a mediator and sender, and by the Holy Spirit as sent and applier. It follows that the triune God is the author of salvation. Just read that bit. And by the Holy Spirit as sent and applier. It follows that the triune God is the author of salvation. Inasmuch as he has executed in time the eternal plan of salvation. And it goes on and on and on. But that's the book. It's published by uh, Banner of Truth. Um, Banner of Truth books are superb. There isn't a Banner of Truth book published that is not worth its weight in gold. Every book by the Banner of Truth is worth its weight in gold. And uh, this is another one of their excellent books. So, oh, it will strengthen you. If it weren't for the Banner of Truth books, I'd have gone insane, you know, in this modern age. These books really ground you and help you to get into the truth of Scripture. Uh, they publish many classics and they have modern authors as well. Uh, but yeah, so please get yourself a copy of that this year. And uh, you can you can get it probably on Amazon or ring up Banner Truth or email Banner Truth or uh, go to your local Christian bookshop or bookshop and order it. And uh, if you if you've not ref read Reformed theology before, this will be a good introduction to it, and uh, it will really help you, really bless you. So yeah, I'm going to recommend some other books in a minute. But please get hold of this book. God bless you.